Congratulations to the winners of last week FL Studio giveaway. I'll send you guys an email. So, you're overwhelmed by watching mixing tutorials because everything you try, your mix still sounds unbalanced. You feel like people are holding back mixing secrets that they don't want you to know. Well, not anymore. I'm gonna show you how to mix beats for complete beginners. Little disclaimer, mixing songs is the job of a mixing engineer. You are the beat maker and if you're looking to mix your beats, all you need are the basics, which we're gonna jump in right now. Number one, leveling your sounds. This right here is a super simple beat. You can see all the used layers in the picker panel and they need to be linked to a mixer track. Now to do that, double click it to open it up and on the top right, you can send it to one of your mixer tracks by using the scroll wheel on your mouse. Do that to all your sounds if you haven't already. Once that's done, make sure to give every mixer track a name by selecting it and hitting F2 on your keyboard. You can even choose a color label as well. Once that's done, we're gonna bring down the volume of all the faders. You can do that by selecting them all by holding down control and dragging them. Drag them all the way down so that you don't hear anything. Now, in hip hop and trap, the drums are usually dominating. So we're gonna start with that. Go to the mixer track where the kick is sent to. Increase the fader, but try to leave a little headroom for the other elements. I like to aim for minus six dB, but don't lock yourself to decibels. Then I like to bring in the 808s. Make sure to find a balance between the kick and bass so that both of them are nicely audible. Also, don't go past 0 dB. Always keep in mind to leave some headroom. Now, the kick and 808 both have some frequencies that can clash with each other. But don't worry about that yet. I'll show you a fix later. Next, we're gonna level the snare. This can be on the loud side since the snare is also a dominating sound in trap. Match it a little with the kick and bass. The hi-hats can be a little more in the background, but it doesn't have to be subtle either. And now it's time to bring in the melody, but turn the volume up carefully. Don't let the melody dominate the drums. Try to make it sound like it's following the drums. This depends on the instrument, of course. I'm using a bell and a dark, simple piano. Oh, and don't be afraid to go back and tweak your drums. You know, we're balancing everything in one mix. Now, when gain staging is done, you're already 80% there. But now it's time to learn the juicy stuff. In the mixer panel, you can pan your sounds to the left or right side of your headphones or speakers. You can do that with the panning knob above the fader. Now, before we do that, we're gonna make the kick and 808 mono. Drag the stereo knob all the way to the right on both mixers. This will put them in the center of the mix and leave more room on the side for other sounds. Now you can start adding subtle panning to your hi-hats and percussions. Now, when you're panning and playing with the dynamics of your music, it's incredibly important to also check your beats on speakers. Studio monitors provide a more accurate version of the spatial aspects of your mix. When you're wearing headphones and pan the sounds to the left, you can only hear it with your left ear. But when using speakers, you will also hear a little sound on the right side. That's why it's crucial to also mix your music on speakers. Unfortunately, that is not always possible. For example, when you have bad room acoustics or when you live in a small apartment with angry neighbors close by. But I got a solution for you guys. Sonarworks, the sponsor of today's video, has an add-on called Virtual Monitoring that turns your headphones into speakers. It literally simulates your studio monitors inside your headphones. Let me show you real quick. First, open up Sound ID Reference. On top, you can choose Add New Headphone Profiles. They have more than 500 compatible headphones, so don't worry. From the menu, simply find the headphones that you're using to make music and apply the profile. Then when they're added, go to the bottom right and click on Virtual Monitoring. On the left side, Side, make sure the add one is enabled. Now all that's left to do is choose a speaker simulation. You can choose from near field, mid field or far field. It's that simple. Now this means you can also go to a coffee shop and produce music there as if you were in a professional studio. Now what I also love about the sound ID reference program is that you can translate your mix to other devices. From the preset list you can simulate how your music will sound in your car, on a laptop or perhaps on some phone speakers. That way you can make sure your music sounds great on all devices. I'm still Still using this tool every single day and if you want to level up your music click the link down below and now it's time to get back to mixing we're gonna clean it up a little bit now the melody and the bass both have very low frequencies and when they're played together it can make the mix sound
sound muddy. Now, we actually don't need the lows from the melody. So, to remove them, go to the mixer track of the piano and select it. Then go to the effects rack and find the fruity parametric EQ. Then open it up. On the top right, you can choose a high pass preset. Now click and drag the first band to somewhere in between 100 and 200 hertz. Again, this depends on your sound selection. And there you go. You can do the exact same thing for the bell melody. I also find the bell a little harsh, so to fix that, cut away a portion of the high end. That will make it sound more distant. Next up, we're gonna create a bus. Let me explain. All these mixer tracks are routed directly to the master track. This is where all your sounds come out. Now, let's say I wanna add an effect to all of my drums. Then you can apply effects on every track separately, but that would use a lot of your CPU. Instead, you wanna take another mixer track and call it drum bus. I like to make my buses black. Then select all your drum sounds by holding down control and dragging them. Go to the bus track and on the bottom, right click and choose send to this track only. Now, all of these sounds will be sent to the drum bus first and then it will go to the master. This allows us to add an effect on all of these drums at the same time. And that is actually the next trick. We're gonna make the drums sound like they belong together by using a glue compression. To do that, select the drum bus and in the effects list, find the fruity compressor. Once it's open, create a super aggressive compression. Something like this will do the job. You can copy my settings if you'd like. Now, if you play back your mix, it will sound terrible. That is because we still need to mix the original drums with the overcompressed version. Now to do that, go back to the mixer track and find the effect again. On the right, you can see this mix knob. Turn it all the way down and slowly turn it back up until everything sounds balanced. Sounds awesome already. Next, we're gonna add some reverb to the bell melody. To do that, we're gonna create another bus or send mixer track. You'll see why in a second. Select it and press F2. Now you can call it reverb and perhaps give it a beautiful color. With the mixer track selected, find the fruity reverb effect. Set the dry slider to 0% and the wet slider to 100 to get a pure reverb sound. Select the melody track and go to the reverb bus. Then click the arrow on the bottom. And now the melody is not only linked to the master but also to the reverb bus. You can now use this knob on the bottom to choose the amount of reverb to your melody. Try to keep it subtle because too much reverb will make your beat sound like it's drowning. We're doing it this way because now you can send multiple mixer tracks to that one reverb bus. Next, we're gonna make the 808 sound a little crunchier. You can use a distortion plugin or something, but I also know another way to do it. In the channel rack, open up the 808 sampler. Then right here, click on the effect target. Then make sure clip is selected and increase the boost knob. This will make it sound a little crunchier, but keep an eye on the master track and make sure that the levels are still in balance. And finally, it's time to make the kick and 808 work together. And you can learn everything about that in the video right here on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching. Goodbye.